This show is brought to you by South Cal Real Estate Connections. Welcome to the Telescope View. We're here tonight with the author of The Final Revelation, The Sun Project, co-host Rick Tellis, and of course our favorite Martian, Steve Parker. Ooh. And yours truly, Larry Mangello. And tonight's show, R Rick, is really special. I'll tell you, I am just at awe to wait to see what you have to say about Walt Disney and the UFO incidents. Tell me about it. He's been going. Excuse me. He's been going on and on about this one since we did the last show. This, this, this is a fun one. This is a pretty interesting. Um, I find it interesting. Anybody who knows about Walt Disney uh, knows that he had this uncompromising attention to detail. <clears throat> I mean, this guy was OCD when it came to detail. Mm -hmm. He, um, in the 1964-65 World's Fair, they created the Carousel for Progress, which a lot of people yeah. may have seen at, at Disney World. Remember that. Well, when he created this, he actually gave the Imagineers, those are his people that created all this, he gave them notes on every one of the anima, uh, audio animatronic figures, 32 of them, on how they should move. He gave them notes on how the robins outside the window should move. And then, if you remember the Carousel of Progress, you had Uncle Wilbur in the bathtub, and Disney wanted <laughs> yeah. to make sure his toes wiggled as they yeah. stuck out of the water. Yeah. He looks at every detail. He misses nothing when it comes to the audio animatronic figures, the design of the attractions, the music, the lyrics. He misses nothing. So they had another uh, attraction at the 1965 uh, World's Fair, 64, 65 World's Fair, um, called the Magic Skyway Trip. And here's kind of what it looked like. And anybody who went there kind of remembered it. I remember that. It was a trip through time. You mm -hmm. sat in a Ford convertible. Yep. And they took you through time from the dawn of man or dawn of, of, of the, the earth uh, through history. And it was interesting. The first person that comes on there is, is, uh, is Henry Ford II. Then Walt Disney does an opening narration. He does the narration for the trip. And in the narration, he says something interesting. Now, it might not be interesting to everybody else. It was very interesting to me because of the way he chooses words. Walt Disney said, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase here, we're moving backwards in time many millions of years. In fact, we're moving back long before man arrived on this planet. Why did he choose the mm, words arrived on this planet versus evolved? And if he didn't want to get into evolved, he could have said appeared. And it might sound trivial to a lot of people, but when you know somebody like Walt Disney, anybody who's ever worked directly for Walt Disney said how difficult it was to work for him, how precise he was on everything. Why did he choose that word? Now, it may sound trivial to a lot of people, but there's more to the story than just that. Am I right? Excuse me. Did, was he overall, you, in, the, in the world of what we talk about, UFOs and everything else, was this something that way back when, was, was there any, any signs that Walt was specifically interested in this kind of stuff? I mean, Walt, it would seem to make sense that he would be. Walt was kind of interested in some of this stuff. We don't have a lot on Walt except what he participated in. And that's kind of the story we're going to talk about. Here we have the Magic Skyway, fine. Let's, let's move forward to more of the story. Here we have Ward Kimball. Ward Kimball um, was one of the premier Disney animators. Disney called him, he was a close friend of Disney. Disney called him one of the trusted nine old men of the Supreme Court of Animation. Wow. He looks it. Yeah, he, 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 he was the man. He, he designed Jiminy Cricket, um, the March Hare, Cheshire Cat. He redesigned Mickey Mouse in 1938. Wow. This was the man for Disney. Disney trusted <coughs> him with everything. <coughs> now, I'm also just going to point out here, right here, is we have Walt Disney standing with, anybody Ron know who that is? Ron Braun. Ron Braun. Ron Braun. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. He, he was responsible for a space program. Disney was very involved in that. That's why at Disneyland, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he had the TWA spaceship to the future. He also had the flying saucers yeah. in there. <laughs> And Von Braun had, had been interviewed. Many people told the story of uh, when they asked Von Braun, how did we make this progress and make it so quickly? He said, we had help from them. And he pointed to some files that were behind him, supposedly about extraterrestrial life. Mm -hmm. Von Braun said this. All right. So anyway, we have Ward Kimball, very close confidant of Disney. What a lot of people didn't know is that Ward Kimball was also, he was a, he was a real student of the UFO phenomenon. He was also very interested in outer space and what was happening and where we were going. In 1979, uh, in a symposium, uh, uh, MUFON symposium in California, he, had, he, he made a speech and he told everybody about his interest in UFOs and uh, uh, his interest in space. Then he stunned the audience 
when he told them about a project uh, of how the U.S. government had approached Walt Disney personally, mm -hmm. Walt Disney himself, to make a UFO documentary to help acclimatize the American population to the reality of exist, uh, extraterrestrial life. Oh. And people were stunned. What? Are you, I mean, this for real? Not, he's making a speech. He's not joking yeah, around. Yeah. Okay. So Kimball said that in his speech in the 1955-56 time frame, the U.S. Air Force contacted Walt Disney, went right to Walt, uh, and asked him to cooperate on a document about UFOs. And at that time, the Air Force said, we will give you real footage of UFOs that you can use. You can put them in this documentary. <clears throat> and we want you to help you know, uh, people understand that yeah. all this exists. All right. Disney agreed to do this. Now, that wasn't unusual, because Disney had worked with the, the US government during World War II, propaganda-type films, cartoons, all that type of thing, bonds, buy bonds, that type of thing. Um, the other thing is that the, 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 um, the 1953 CIA Robertson panel who went and looked at all these UFOs and, of course, came out and said, oh, they're nothing. Yet they wanted to uh, have Walt Disney make a bunch of UFO documentaries um, to strip the UFO phenomenon of its, of its, of its status, of, its, um, uh, of what they call its special status and, and the mystery it has acquired using mass media. Mm -hmm. So they had already come to him and said, we want you to kind of shut this down. This is the second time we've heard the government yeah. approach mass media. It would be with Disney was one, and prior to that in 52, <clears throat> Roger Ramey, who was the general of Roswell, wanted asked the media after the, the UFO incidences in Washington, D.C., they wanted the media to, 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 to kind of um, defuse all these UFO mm -hmm. reports by making uh, anybody or making it seem that anybody who reported this was either a nutcase or a, a hoaxer. So that wasn't new, but Disney agreed uh, to do this, to put together a documentary using real footage provided by uh, the, US, the U.S. government or the Air Force uh, at the time. So this is something they're going to start to do. They started production. They started working on this. What Kimball then said is that, however, um, after production had become and the Air Force saw a few of these first cuts of what they were going to do, uh, they had second thoughts. They decided that um, that the, 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 the it was too much for the public. They thought it was too much for the public. They decided that um, there would be no. U they did not want that UFO footage in included in there. They thought it was too intense for the public, so they wanted to back off on all this. So, according to Kimball, when he heard about this, he was a little upset because he was working on the project. So he went directly to this colonel <coughs> and he wanted to know what's going on. The colonel said, "Listen, there's plenty of UFO footage, but we've decided you're not going to see it." Nobody else is going to see it at this time. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to put a hold on this. Um, and he was upset. And what happened at the time is Disney had already, as part of this documentary, they were creating some, some animated characters based on UFO fol mm -hmm. folklore. What Disney decided to do is to, he couldn't go ahead with the, the UFO footage, but they made, ended up making a cartoon using Jonathan Winters. I don't yeah. know if many people remember <laughs> Jonathan yep, Winters. Yep, yep. Voicing a lot of the characters. And they put them out as cartoons. And according to Kimball, that's kind of where it ended. But that's not where it ended. I, I, when, I, when I heard this, I was listening to this because my and daughter... now the real story. Yeah, I was listening to this because I've listened to it before, but my daughter had gotten me these CDs about 1964-65 World's Fair, and you can hear mm -hmm. all the stuff that Disney did. And I'm sitting there, I'm listening to it, and I heard, it, I heard him say, arrived. Wait a minute, I'm going to go back. Hmm. Arrived. <coughs> arrived on this planet. All right. This is interesting. So I contacted some of the people that I know, and one of them came back and said, here's what I'll tell you, that was not the end of the story. Maybe that's what Kimball said, but that's not at the, uh, at the end of the story. Um, the truth is that Kimball's story was not 100% accurate. All right? And he told me what really happened is that the Air Force saw the initial cuts. They thought the footage was too intense. Okay. So what they did is they said, we're going to end this project, and we're going to confiscate all pieces that you've done so far with the UFO footage. We're going to tuck that away. Nobody's going to see it. All right? And everybody involved was sworn to secrecy. And his belief was that Kimball wanted to be able to tell everybody that such a thing happened, but he didn't want to go so far as to say, we actually still have copies of this. We're just going to say, well, we stopped, and we created the cartoons. That, yeah. that was his way of being able to reveal it but not reveal it. Now, according to this, uh, this, this person, I almost said Air Force officer, they were sworn to secrecy. <coughs> what he said that there, 
the, the reality is, believe it or not, that copies of this documentary still exist and are tucked away with classified files that detail the entire project. They are still out there. Now, some people might remember a documentary that uh, the Disney company did in 1995. Uh, they were going to have a new thing, Extraterrestrial Encounter at yes, Disney World. Yes. They put some stuff out there. That's very interesting, though. It's 43 minutes. You can find it on YouTube. But they talk in very absolute terms. The government has been observing extraterrestrial craft for over you know, 70 years. You might want to watch that. But this is a different one. Nobody has ever seen this particular documentary. And I was talking to him. And I said, so is it possible you think it's been so long? He goes, he goes, it's interesting you should ask about this. He goes, because nobody really ever asked about it. It's almost like a second thought to people out there who deal with this. It's like, oh, yeah, it's there. I said, so is it possible to get this documentary, this video? And he responded to me by saying, is that what you want for Christmas? <laughs> and I said, well, if you have nothing else to get me. Yeah. And then he didn't say anything else. So I don't know if I'm going to get a copy of this documentary or a piece of this by Christmas time. You know, who knows? We, you know, our show may be canceled by then. We may not get renewed. <laughs> nah, never happens. Either. I have a question. Excuse me. I got <coughs> Go ahead. Only because it's been irking me since we started this. Yeah. Isn't Walt Disney frozen? You know, we keep hearing that. Uh, you know, yeah. I keep hearing that he was he frozen. Supposedly he is. Yeah. That when the time comes, they can revive him. Now, now the, you know, the, the problem question is, is right? why did he do that? Yeah. That's the question. Well, you know, the problem with freezing is too, right? Is is your when you when you thaw people, if you're not, you don't do it the right way, which we're not sure. All the cells explode, so they have to. He's biting on that. The, at some point, we're going to know how to, yeah. you know, thaw you out without the cell structures and the cell membranes exploding or, or whatever. How did he supposedly die when he did die? I don't remember. Yeah, I just just. I think it was a heart attack, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was something where you know something where obviously got into a big argument yeah. with Mickey Mouse, and you know, <laughs> that was it. You know, it was Somebody slipped him on Mickey. No, no Mickey, so they... Mickey said, "I'm not working without a new contract." The real question is, though. Why did he do that? He, he had to have something in his mind something, you know, about the he, future. Well, and, and that's my question. Was that a hint? Was he giving us a hint? He doesn't. We were talking you know, with our friend Kat here, who's been on the show with yeah. us, and, and she's a writer. And she was saying how when she writes her book, you know, every word she picks. And I said, yeah, I did the same thing. I said, when you write something, you're very, you try to be very precise with words when you're trying to oh, get sure. something across. I mm -hmm. mean, and you do the same thing yep. when you do yep. your show. And this is a man who was, no, no doubt he was OCD. You know, he was really yeah. obsessively yeah. compulsive on everything he did for Disney. And you see that in the product. He chose the word arrived for a reason. I mean, is it a coincidence that you know, he also, um, you know, at Disneyland, when it opened, he also had the flying saucer ride, which, which, yeah. which ended up, they had to take it down. And I, my understanding was the maintenance was very difficult. I hear that they want to bring it back. But maintenance was very difficult, but it was a huge hit uh, out there. But after that point, he was involved in a lot of this that he would talk about. Um, I just don't believe that he would pick that word that, if there wasn't a reason for it. And then when you hear what Kimball had to say, he was right in the middle of all this. But, and, you know, and we've heard this before where they start to want to do something, and then somebody pulls the plug and says, no, we're not going to do it. What possible motive would Kimball have to tell this story? If it wasn't true, I mean, why? Uh, there's, there's really no reason why he would he would do it. So why do we have a picture of Walt next to a gray? Yeah. Well, we put it there because we don't know if Walt knew him or not. I'm just yeah. wondering if that's what Walt's. Everybody loved this picture, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's their favorite gray, right? Yeah, that's, that's one of our. Did he know the story? Now, when you talked about the saucer, excuse me, and you mentioned mm -hmm. that maintaining that ride or whatever. Was it riding on something different or what was it? Well, it was it? an air thing and they oh, had what? trouble maintaining it, yeah. So it was like riding on a, on a bed of air? Yeah, and you know, today they could do it with uh, a mag, you know, magnet sure. like they do the, the, uh, the, the tramway there. Yep, yep. Yeah. So they're thinking about putting it back, but see, we also had the rocket ship. Rocket, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The ship to the moon. At the mm -hmm. time it was the ship to the moon, TWA. That, that was really, I remember as a kid, I used to see pictures that I always wanted to go to California and, See this. You know? I remember. I remember the World's Fair though in New York. Now, were those all? I'm, I'm trying to remember those. Were those all convertible Mustangs they put them in? Was I don't that? know if they were Mustangs or um, Falcons. I'm not sure yeah. what they were. Well, yeah. they, they, they did they were all, debut a Mustang yeah. at the World's Fair. And yeah. the reason they did that is because prior to that, GM had done Futurama. Okay. And yeah. They had their cars. Oh yeah. Um, but Disney, they wanted something special. Disney wanted something special, uh, and. Um, Man, that was that was quite a thing. Well, I was a little kid, but I remember going to that. I remember going to that too. I have a picture of me sitting with my mother in front of the Unisphere. 
And of course, the globe is still up there. The Unisphere mm. is still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the globe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there it is. Yeah. So uh, when I heard this, I said, "This is this is a fun thing to talk about." And you know, I posted this on um, on a Facebook website I have mm. for the book, and I had over fourteen thousand in two days. Really, fourteen thousand readers. Wow. And so many people who knew Disney said that is a great observation yes. because this is the way the man was. They absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. Um, so. I thought it would be fun to talk about, and people can go and look all this stuff up. It's it's, it's right out there. And it's interesting how George Lucas is. You know, they took the Star Wars stuff and everything to Disney in town too, right? Well, yeah. And, and then when I spoke to the, and I called you know my friend and I said something, it wasn't like what or oh I don't know. Let me tell you. He goes, yeah. oh yeah. He goes, yeah. He goes, that's kind of, he goes. In the way he was, it was so nonchalant. He goes, that's kind of funny because it seems like everybody knows about it. And when you mention it to these people, even the classified files, the people who are in yeah. the business, they kind of go, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, because it's Disney. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. oh yeah, that was that, yeah, that's kind of. Boy, would it would be great to see this movie or whatever. Yeah, he I, did. I can see us showing Production. this. And the next thing you know is oh, Larry's boy. disappearing in the back of a oh, black God. suburban. <laughs> and uh, no, there's no building left on this plot of land. Anymore. But remember, the video or, or, or the footage that they're going to have is going to be 16 millimeter yeah. video or yep. something like yep. that, and it's going to be from somewhere between 47 and 52. So it's not going. It's going to be. You know some of the older stuff that, that that they were looking at. Maybe they have video from uh, uh, Washington D.C. and what know. happened in D.C. Well, Washington D.C. was the the uh, 1952 was they call it the invasion of Washington D.C. We talked about yes. it on the last show. Um, the invasion of Washington D.C. where all these lights were flying over Washington D.C. picked up by four different ground radars. Oh yeah. And some of them were not military. Some were. Uh, they tried to say it was temperature inversion, but all four radars wouldn't malfunction. Let me tell you, radar doesn't time. lie. And radar doesn't 52, lie. Okay. July of 52. And then, uh, and it happened over two or three weekends. You had also had witnesses in the air who saw it, witnesses on the ground who saw it. They had a fighter chasing them and couldn't catch them. Couldn't catch them. <laughs> and then other times the fighters would be launched, they'd get into the air, and these blips would disappear. So, there's um, reasons why I'm not allowed on some of these shows. <laughs> we'll go into that on another show. <laughs> so it's, it's um, I thought it would, be, it would be fun. Walt Disney would be fun to talk about. Let me about. tell you, this has been a great, great thing to talk about. I and my, I have never heard of this. This A lot of people haven't heard of it, yeah. Boy, oh boy, would I love to get some of that footage. Oh I, I, boy. I think people have heard, and when you say this, they, they kind of, like one person goes, gee, I always knew about Walt Disney during the war, and the Bond cartoons yeah. and all the other stuff that they did in the war things. Um, so it kind of makes sense that the government would go back to them. Disney, people don't know also, I was told, had a top secret clearance. Oh, really? Because some of the stuff he did during the war and some of the other things that he was involved yep. with as yep. an advisor for the government, yep. he had a top secret clearance. So when originally when this happened, and some people said, we want to do this, they said, oh, Disney, you're fine. You know, go ahead. Yeah. Um, which... <laughs> that, I didn't know that. I didn't know he had a top secret clearance. Wow. But then again, in the war years, you had a lot of different people working together um, to do what it happened. You know what? I would bet that what happened here was not the Air Force, but it was the Counterintelligence Corps. We've talked about them before. After the yes. war, the Counterintelligence Corps, you know, they were a secret group, um, yep. you know, not like not the FBI, but they were very secret counterintelligence. And everybody was afraid about the Red Menace and communism and that type of thing. So the counterintelligence corps, they're working in this country, and they would supposedly route out the bad guys. And they were a rough bunch. And if you, they told you to be quiet, you, you were quiet. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if the counterintelligence got involved, because they had officers attached to every Air Force base, uh, all these things. They got in and said, listen, we're not going to do that. We're just not going to. And you didn't really question the CIC very often. Um, like in the Roswell case, um, I was, you know, one, one person said that if, if you, if you continue speaking about this, you'll, they'll find your bones in the desert. That's yeah. what one of the witnesses was told. That's not and good. When I was talking <laughs> to one of my guys who was a, a, a captain in the United States Navy, naval intelligence, high as you can be, Phil said to me, he goes, you know, that's interesting. And I wrote this in the book. He said, if somebody, to, if the, if somebody <laughs> said the CIC said to be quiet or you'd find your bones in, in the desert, he goes, I believe it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, wow. that's, that's what he, he was very serious about that. Well, so. you know, it's really interesting to see that they really wanted to get the public ready to desensitize all this UFO stuff, you know? Well, it seems like you had two groups. You had one group, and, and if, if you look at, in 1952, again, the, the Washington, um, what they call the Washington Flap or the invasion of Washington when that happened, you had, um, what's his name, the Secretary of Defense there, um, I remember his name, um, not Vandenberg. Um, I'm trying to remember his name. 
He sat in the meeting with all these people. He says, well, we're going to have to tell the American people about this. And they said, yeah, yeah, of course we will. And then there's another group all of a sudden that said, no, we don't want to tell the American people any of this. What would they think if they believed that their Air Force did not have control of the skies? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. So it seems like there's two groups there. Yeah. One is we're not telling anybody anything. Yep. And another group that says we want to start telling people things. And it's almost like they're saying, well, if you want to tell people things, you can do it this way. Mm -hmm. But you can't come out and say, mm -hmm. this is what the reality. Yeah. And then you have the other group pulling stuff back at certain points of time. This is the same group. You have, on one hand, the group saying, we want to make sure that the media makes anybody who reports this feel as if they're crazy or they're a hoaxer. All right? Yeah. And now we look back and we learn some of the stuff. We're saying, well, some of these people weren't crazy and they weren't hoaxers. They saw something. They didn't know what it was. And then you had this other group who was kind of willing to, um, you know, entertain this information, but couldn't make, you know, couldn't seem to, to, to push through, you know, government, uh, you know, regulations. So, yeah, this. Uh, now, I would imagine now with all the things that are happening with the internet, that there's so much more discussion on all of this stuff than there than we could well, ever imagine years ago. There's there's a ton of discussion, yeah. and, and the thing is, and we wrote about this is, the U.S. government doesn't really care what you say. <clears throat> As long as you have no evidence to back it up. Right, right. <laughs> you have the evidence, they're going to come looking for it, mm -hmm. or somebody's going to come yeah. Yeah. looking for it. But the problem is you're starting to, especially even with space, we're seeing you know, Elon Musk and these mm -hmm. other people yeah. launching things into space. You're not going to be able to hide things if there are things up there with these private corporations, unless, of course, somebody goes to the private corporation and they say, listen, you're not launching from anywhere because they're using government launch facilities right now, unless you keep your mouth shut. I mean, that could be true. You never know. You but know, yes, people are embracing this uh, government's And the sciences. fact that the NASA now having teach teachers right. about this subject is telling you something, right? Right. They had a program recently um, for teachers in grades, or educators, they call them in grades 4 through 12, that they want them to explain to students now that every one of our NASA missions, every one of our space missions, the key component will be to search for extraterrestrial life. So... Um, that's, no, that, that's you, huge. You it may not sound that. big for NASA. Mm. That is huge. That is, mm -hmm. that is a yeah. huge mm -hmm. concession yeah. on, on their part. So. Absolutely. I um, mean, when you start embracing that thought of getting educators ready to teach kids, you know they're up there, it's right there. You and, know? And, and we've discussed this before. Take a step backwards. It's not such a big deal. This is not a big deal. It only is because for most of our lives we've been told this can't be. But it's not a big deal. As it's been explained to me, think of it this way. It's people just like us. They may even have some relation to us that are 500 years, 1,000 years advanced, doing what we're doing now with Mars and the space probe. Except they're more advanced. They found the Earth. They stumbled upon it. And this is what they did. That's not hard to believe because we're going to be doing it ourselves in the future. Absolutely. We're looking at our future. We are looking at we our future. We are looking at I our so. future. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I yep. mean, the subject, Rick, has just been outstanding. And tonight, show, talking about a man like Walt Disney is so special. I just, w I hope we could find this footage somewhere and let the public know what the real deal is, you know? We'll see what we can do. We'll see if, you know, if my Christmas wish comes okay. through. Okay. <laughs> well, as usual, Rick, I got to congratulate you. You're excellent today. Great. I want to thank Great. Mr. Parker, my favorite alien <laughs> and we're always here to have to have a great time and i want to thank you the reviewer and please tune in again next week to the telescope view and please email us at the view show at aol.com thank you and good night